Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about astaxanthin in skincare. People claim that this ingredient is more potent than vitamin C. They claim that it's gonna be a better ingredient for brightening up, hyperpigmentation, evening out skin tone, etc. What the heck is astaxanthin? It's a mouthful. Astaxanthin is an antioxidant that is in the family of antioxidants called carotenoids. These are compounds that actually give carrots their orange color. Astaxanthin is what's found in lobster and salmon and gives it that reddish hue. Now, astaxanthin is an antioxidant. There's no doubt about that. It is of interest to researchers because in laboratory studies, meaning like cells on a dish, it has shown promise for being a potent antioxidant, more so than maybe some other antioxidants in terms of scavenging free radicals. So when cosmetic manufacturers hear stuff like this, they take that little tidbit and run wild with it. Create products focused around the ingredient and make all sorts of claims saying that the ingredient is like 10 times more potent than vitamin C. But is it actually? Honestly, we really don't know. Researchers examined the free radical scavenging ability of astaxanthin in comparison to beta carotene and another uh, carotenoid, canthaxanthin. They looked at human dermal fibroblast cells in a dish that they had irradiated with UVA. And they showed that astaxanthin was more potent than the other two antioxidants in terms of uh, mitigating the damaging effects of UVA through scavenging free radicals. But that's cells in a dish, not actual, um, not actually looking at application to the skin in humans, whether or not the astaxanthin actually gets into the skin and is able to scavenge free radicals, how stable is it in topical forms? You know, antioxidants, they're all well and good. They have all of these, you know, a lot of amazing potential, but many of them suffer the limitation of poor stability, especially in topical formulation. They're susceptible to oxidation, and so that's always a limitation with antioxidants and skincare products. And as far as I know, at least from my research and looking on PubMed and whatnot, I don't see any studies that examine the stability and permeation of astaxanthin in topical forms when applied to the skin. Actually, there are very few studies in people with topical astaxanthin to support a lot of the claims that cosmetic manufacturers are making about their products that contain astaxanthin, the so-called potent antioxidant. There are some other potential, potential benefits of astaxanthin in um, mouse models and laboratory studies. Uh, it suggests that astaxanthin has an immune boosting effect. Specifically, uh, researchers showed that astaxanthin boost up and boosted up antibody production in mouse models. But okay, we're not mice, and you know whether or not that translates to any benefit to humans has yet to be determined. In laboratory studies looking at markers of inflammation, astaxanthin has been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects in laboratory studies, not in actual people. So it's compelling that maybe in people it might help and in reduce inflammation that contributes to aging and all sorts of disease processes. So you can see why researchers are interested in this, but that doesn't make it something that we know much about beyond these small studies. There's a paper that was done in 2012 looking at both oral and topical application of astaxanthin. And I don't know, I mean, I keep seeing this study quoted um, a, a lot online, but it's not very good quality. They did, they actually did a few clinical studies within one paper, which is odd. They did a um, open label, non-controlled, non-placebo controlled study just on women, like 30 women who applied astaxanthin to their skin and then also took an oral supplement of astaxanthin at six milligrams per day. They applied the product daily and they took the pill daily. And at the end of, what was it, eight weeks, 
they had better skin hydration and improvement in wrinkles but that tells us nothing i mean like is it because they're applying something to their skin i mean presumably the astaxanthin is almost like in a moisturizing vehicle right even if it's just water of course that's going to increase hydration and decrease wrinkle depth so that really doesn't show us anything there were no compare there was no comparison to something you know like a placebo within the same paper they also looked at uh, giving men instead of women men uh, an astaxanthin supplement again um six uh, six milligrams daily, uh, and men, they, they looked at like 36 men, and in this study they actually had a placebo, they actually had a placebo pill, and at the end of the study, I think it was, yeah, six weeks, at the end of the study, uh, the men taking the actual astaxanthin had an improvement in moisture content in their skin. Very small, uh, I mean, it's just not conclusive. Uh, in other words, more studies on actual people are needed to say for sure that this ingredient is beneficial when applied topically or ingested. Now, astaxanthin can be uh, isolated from uh, microalgae producing, actually. Is it safe? Well, when applied topically, it seems to be more than fine. Like, I don't have any issue with people trying this and using it. I haven't seen any you know, patients who have had irritation or anything that I can pinpoint to as dizanthin. It seems well tolerated. If it is anti-inflammatory, like the laboratory studies would suggest, you might imagine that it would be beneficial for redness, irritation, sensitivity. But again, no clinical studies to back that up. What about taking it orally? Is that safe? Well, it's possible that it's not. Uh, we don't really know the safety of astaxanthin as a dietary supplement. I will remind you, however, that we do have literature to suggest that uh, taking another antioxidant in supplement form, vitamin E, has been associated with increased lung cancer in smokers. So, you know, that always makes me nervous when it comes to any antioxidant supplement, dietary supplement. And I would say you're better off eating, uh, veg you know, vegetables that have carotenoids in them or, you know, salmon and getting it from dietary sources as opposed to a supplement. Um, I also came across some information, you know, a lot of dietary supplements, they can interfere with how medications are metabolized. And so in theory, medications that are metabolized to the P450 enzyme system uh, could interact with astaxanthin supplements. So you wanna be careful with that. And I also came across some information on this supplement suggesting that it might inhibit the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. And that's important because a lot of, several, you know, many people take uh, medications that inhibit that enzyme. And there are side effects associated with those medications. Uh, that in the medication is usually low and, and not as common, but if you compound it with uh, an ingredient that might also inhibit that enzyme, you might get too much inhibition and have more side effects. 5-alpha um, reductase inhibitors that you might take orally, I mean this is in men, uh, would be like Avidart or Finasteride. And some potential side effects of those medications are impotence and uh, poor libido, decreased sperm count. So compounding that with a dietary supplement that might also inhibit that enzyme, you're, you're more likely to have those side effects. And that's particularly worrisome that it might inhibit that enzyme for women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. Um, so I would caution anybody who's pregnant or breastfeeding to not take astaxanthin supplements for that reason. It could have adverse effects on the fetus or we don't really know the safety in lactation. So I, you know, I would, I would be very cautious about that. And anything that enhances immune function, theoretically, you have to worry about for patients who have autoimmune diseases, uh, it might actually end up worsening their disease. See, we don't really know to what extent, if any, these this ingredient has immune boosting properties, but if it does increase antibody production, people who make antibodies against themselves, which is what autoimmunity, autoimmune diseases do, uh, they wouldn't want that, and that could potentially be bad. But I don't have any, you know, actual data to support this, it's all theoretical risk.
with dietary supplements. In my opinion, there's more risk with taking a dietary supplement than applying this to the skin. It seems to, you know, not be irritating or cause problems for people, but you know, whether or not it actually gets in and scavenges free radicals and does all of this stuff, I, you know, no. I have always pointed out to you guys that there are limitations with applying the antioxidant L-ascorbic acid or vitamin C to the skin. It too has, it, it has poor stability and manufacturers, they've come out with different ways to stabilize it. And one of the more impressive and convincing ways is the patent that L'Oreal ha has uh, in the SkinCeutical CE Ferulic has to be at a right pH in order for it to actually get into the skin. So they've actually worked those things out to make that more of a compelling ingredient. If you're already using a vitamin C serum and you're happy with it, just stick with that. I don't think you need to go chasing this mystery ingredient. Um, and as it stands to me, everything that manufacturers say about it are really just claims. Um, and if you have hyperpigmentation, I would not you know, I would stick to one of the ingredients or a combination of ingredients that actually have been shown to benefit hyperpigmentation. I've got a video on the top 10, my top 10 ingredients, um, things like hydroquinone or um, soy. I mean, there's more data to support those than astaxanthin. But if you do have hyperpigmentation, you might find yourself using a product that happens to have astaxanthin in there. And at any rate, I don't think it's going to cause issue for you. And it may it may help the hyperpigmentation more than if it wasn't but i don't have data to support that claim so um for whatever it's worth i don't think it's a bad ingredient but i would not i would not be too confident in it um, and go chasing after it you can find several products with this ingredient one that keeps coming up time and time again is the dhc astaxanthin collagen all-in-one cream um spoiler alert uh i this weekend in this upcoming weekend's vlogs i go into the club and they have this particular product so if you're a costco member and you're interested in trying it check your costco so this this product by DHC is like 40 bucks. Um, I can't remember how much it was in, um, in Costco, but I think it was, I think it was pretty expensive. And it's got collagen in it and a few other ingredients. The ingredient profile on that product actually looks pretty good. Um, so check it out if you're interested, but to me it's pretty expensive. Paula's Choice also makes a super, super antioxidant concentrate serum with retinol. It's basically a retinol that has astaxanthin in it. Um, so that's another option and it too is pretty expensive. But you guys, I came across a product on the Amazonian that I have in my cart and I'm probably going to order it and try it out. Um, I, I think I've heard of this brand before, but I've never used anything by them. It is Rovectin Skin Essentials Barrier Repair Face and Body Cream. This is a K-Beauty product, I think. It's cruelty-free and it's $25.99, which is not too bad. It has ceramides in it and it is fragrance-free. So I might actually try that product, not because I'm super excited about astaxanthin, but because the product actually looks good. Comment below and if you have used it, but I'm definitely going to order it and try it out. Um, so let me know if you guys would like a review on that, but yeah, I think I'm going to order it. It looks promising. You know, I like using ceramides in my uh, moisturizers. Um, it looks good overall. So I might try that, but the other ones are pretty expensive. Anyways, let me know if you guys use this ingredient, if you have seen benefit. I caution you though, there's not really data to support this. And no, I don't believe that this ingredient is better than vitamin C uh, for anything, uh, but namely hyperpigmentation, improving wrinkles and fine lines, etc. So that's what I can tell you about astaxanthin. It is a mouthful. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.